Welcome to Sonya Podcast. So someone sent me an article from Allure. I guess they found that this was interesting. I had never even heard of this, but I guess I'll talk about it. Allure is a magazine. So in November 2nd, 2021, there was a question. And the question is, why the myth that dark skin is harder to photograph than lighter skin? So, okay, so the story is a part of the Melon Edit, a platform in which Allure will explore every facet of a melon-rich life, from the most inaugurative treatment for hyperpigmentation to the social and emotional realities, all while spreading. So, in the early days of color film technology, Kodak sold the majority of the color films used in the United States. From the 1940s into the 1990s, Kodak supplied photo labs across the nation with a reference card meant to collaborate the colors, including skin tones within an image. These reference cards dab surely cards after the original model name all featured photos of similar looking brunette white women. Shirley became the standard for color correction, the yardsticks used for processing by technicians, and now a symbol of the skin color by is so deeply rooted within the world of photography. The film chemistry that creates color balance was not originally designed with the yellow, brown, and reddish skin tones in mind, and such hues wouldn't even be considered until the 1970s. For Concordia University professor Leonard Roth, 2009 research on equality of imagery technologies. He spoke with Earl Cage, the former head of the color photo studio at Kodak Park during the 1960s and 70s, a former manager of Kodak Research Studies. Cage shared with Roth that at the time, companies that sold furniture and chocolate raised concerns with Kodak because they were having a good deal of difficulties in differentiating wood grains and the film was failing to distinguish the subtle variations between dark bittersweet and milk chocolate and photographs. The subsequent inclusion of dark skin tones on cold black color film wasn't necessarily a consideration at all. Rather the byproduct of solving an advertising dilemma. While the range of photography technological capabilities have advanced and expanded, specifically over the past few decades, the tech bias in favor of light skin has perpetuated a certain ongoing lore around dark skin. Darker skin tones require more light. Dark skin is more difficult to edit. Dark skin is overall a burden of photographs and films. Even today, with the science of photography at its most inclusive point yet, those behind the camera continue to get it wrong on smaller scales, failing to equally light interracial couples in larger scales in advertisement, television, episodes, and magazine covers alike. But it does have to be this way. Black and brown folks deserve the simple pleasure of recognizing themselves in photos and being proud of their image without having to worry about their skin color being distorted through the lens by faulty tech or by a faulty photographer who lacks the requisite awareness to shoot a spectrum of skin colors. Allura spoke to three photographers with extensive experience working with black and brown subjects about their personal approaches to shooting those with darker skin tones and what they do on set and in post-production to make Melon look great on camera. Because as it as the saying goes, you don't take a photograph, you make it. So, Cameron Reed is always been black people that I photograph. Black people invested in me, and that's why I appreciate capturing them. I don't use any lights. I don't use a setup. All I use in my reflectors in the sunlight. Let me show how beautiful black skin can be with no added lights, no added or artificial whatever. Just pure sunlight, maybe a little bit of makeup in my camera so I can capture the raw realness of sunlight on black skin. CR, as a black storytelling, a black creative, creative, I understand matching the photo tone, color perspectives, and angles to hold you 
angles to how you want the story to be told. But never have I ever in my storytelling made someone's skin tone worse because it's a grittier feel. I use vintage edits all the time. That never changed the skin color. It keeps the same complexion that it would if I was using cool or warm tones or warm shadows. It never changed. There are things that I can do in editing to still keep the integrity of the person's face. CR study. Study people like Tyler Mitchell, who is like Tyler Mitchell, who is my biggest inspiration. Study how the tones in his photos are. Study how he captures the light. Watch the videos he has. If you don't get anything from him, go to one of your favorite black photographers and see what their process is instead. Some may offer a class or post videos that go behind the scenes on how they shoot, look, and research. It's not that hard to capture black faces. It's not not hard as in it's easy but if you follow the right procedures you take your job seriously you do right by editing if you know that a photo is bad then don't put it out there if i know the skin tone of the model in the photo is not their true color it doesn't look defined enough it doesn't have enough light on it i'm not going to post it it's a trust system if the model can't trust the photographer then it's not going to be a good photo shoot Here's another photographer, Jack Jack Koo Harriet. He's a fashion, beauty, and portrait photographer based in New York and Los Angeles. Working in commercial in commercial world, I sometimes get hired to do a lot of group photo shoots, which tend to include a cross section of, of different skin tones. A lot of times, we'd be shooting all models in the same exact lighting settings. When you're shooting a wide range of skin tones under the same lighting condition, it's about having enough time to figure out what makes sense most for each person some skin tones needs a little bit more highlight so that you can see the contours and then sometimes when you bring someone in who got really white skin you need to bring the lights down there is no one size fits all approach when it comes to lighting for darker skin tones or for a lighter skin tone because every person is coming into the frame with a different sort of skin tone he says, for me, the most important thing is always visualizing what people look like in a person and trying to use that knowledge in post-production process when you're doing any burning or dodging, a technique that manipulates the exposure of a selected area on a pho photograph. From differentiate from the rest of the image exposure to make sure that you never lose the contours of someone's skin. He also states that sometimes we'll bring in a V-flat, a lighting tool that is commonly used as a light reflector but can also be used as a dark, as a backdrop or add an additional light or something, a scrim, a material placed between your light source and your subject that either reduce or diffuse light. If the light is coming too harsh, I really honestly give a lot of credit to my wonderful assistant who I work with. So those are two photographers. Well, that was an interesting story. I didn't know there was so much on not being able to photograph darker skinned people. Like I said, I learn something new every day. A lot of the stuff I'm glad the support is given to me because like I said, I do not know. The article is like really, really long. So I just took certain parts of it because it's really, really long just to show that they have up until now have problems um, photographing darker skinned people. Tell me what y'all thoughts are on this. Leave me a comment under this podcast or go at sv766752 at gmail.com. You can also go to my website, http dot dot slash slash podcasters dot com slash wordpress dot com. W-W-W-A-V-I-O. Use promo code Sonya. W-W-S-A-Card. One person said you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can buy me a coffee. You can follow me at son dot i a nine seven nine five Instagram. Sonya Santiago. Twitter. Sonya Santiago. YouTube. Sonya Santiago. Picture. Tony Santiago, Facebook, thank you and have a blessed night.